Hey everyone, it's me Doomlink and welcome back to Doomlink's Random Hunts. I actually don't know what part it is because I was getting this set up pretty uh, pretty much on the fly, which is often what happens when I am recording this series. But anyway, you can see what part it is in the title of the video, so hopefully I don't need to hold your hand to that extent. It is, however, the 21st of March 2020 as I'm recording this. That much I can tell you. And uh, we're going to be hunting a Tigrex, just a single g rank Tigrex today which is fine. We will be hunting something else afterwards, of course, but uh, for now it is just a g rank Tigrex in the Snowy Mountains, which is, of course, the most natural place to fight him, to be honest, because the first place that you do fight a Tigrex in the entire series is in the Snowy Mountains, courtesy of Monsanto Freedom 2. So, yeah. As well as that, it's the first place that you see him in still form as well, like in a picture, because you can see him on the front cover of Monster Hunter Freedom 2 in an ice area. So, yeah. Not that I really need to tell you guys that, I'm sure you all know that, but hey, it's a point of conversation, isn't it? Regardless, we are in Hunstiverse, as per usual. It's interesting, most people do seem to need to know whether or not it's Hunstiverse or something else, but the thing is, I'm always mentioning Hunstiverse, so I don't really know where the confusion is, but regardless. Now, I'm not using anything with raw resistance because I'm thinking I'm going to try to be pretty far away from Tigrex whenever he roars anyway, so I should be able to stay out of his raw range pretty easily. I'm sitting a little bit close to my um, computer monitor here. Now, because this is a PSP game, the heads-up display is really, really big. So, going full screen on a computer monitor sometimes is a little bit overpowering. You need to move your eyes too much to be able to see everything just because of how it's designed. And by it, I mean the heads up display, of course. So I'm probably going to need to sit back a little bit momentarily before I lose my mind, but anyway. Generally, when I do play, I play in a small windowed mode. It just feels better. It's I can comprehend what's going on more easily. But of course, I do record in full screen for your benefit. But uh, anyway... I'm getting hit by the Tigrex, which is fine. We will survive. We don't have everyone here yet. We've still got Gabo, or Garbo, or... I don't know how I'm supposed to say his name, but the point is he will be coming soon, hopefully. Don't really know what he's doing. He is in one place, not moving, so... That's probably not the best thing, but... Uh, we should be fine with our group here. Supposing that he does go AFK for the entirety of this hunt, which he probably won't, but whatever. This is a single Tigrex, and we are all level appropriate, so I'm not seeing too much potential for things to go wrong at this stage. Of course, it, oh well, just as I say that, Darius goes and dies. So now it's two man. What a good start. Because we are still very early on in the quest, so what do you do? Yeah, do your little spin attack, mate. Try and get a hit in with my demonized mode. Of course, because Tyrex does have a habit of moving around quite a lot, it is a little bit annoying to have to get into demonized mode, then attack, because what ends up happening is you stand in one place for a period of maybe two seconds, and by the time you're ready to start attacking, the guy's probably already moved. That's probably an alright example as well. I probably would have been able to get some hits in and evade had I not gone into demonized mode, but hey... Demonized mode is more damage, so it is kind of necessary. I do enjoy non-demonized mode with dual blades in this game because there is more, um, what's the word, mobility involved. See how I can do the triangle plus circle attack to close the distance quickly? Can't really do that when in demonized mode, unfortunately. You can roll, but of course you're already having your stamina depleted because we're in demonized mode, so rolling is really something you would rather not do. Of course, there is no charge bar for dual blades in this game, so it's either you're in demonized mode or you're not, so therefore you're either doing more damage or you're not. That was not good. I really should have um, allowed my... You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Typical second gen death right there. Well, whatever. So... What I was going to say was that uh, with the dual blades, you either are doing more damage or not. But of course, when it comes to not being demonized, you do have more mobility. So that's kind of your um, 
This this fucking Gabo guy, I hate him so much. Imagine going AFK like this, fucking dickhead. We actually might fail this quest because of this guy. I'm just going to go ahead and blame him for it. But anyway, um, yeah, your decision making as far as whether you want to go demonized or not is probably going to be dependent upon whether you would prefer to be mobile or not. So, like, in that moment, what is the most important thing in that fight at that moment? Is it dealing damage or is it being able to move out of the way of an attack? And, um, or also closing the distance, because closing the distance can really help to get attacks out quickly. Because, of course, with demonized mode, you do have to stand in one place for a while, so you have that disconnect between wanting to hit the monster and actually being able to hit the monster. Whereas if you have that ability to close the distance quickly with the dual blades non-demonized, not only are you not having to do that animation which is putting you in demonized mode, you can also, again, close that distance quickly. So... Yeah, I would say that still isn't going to close the gap of damage. Oh my god, okay. I didn't know what he was doing there. I came in at a weird time. We need to get out of this area because we are going to get fucked hardcore otherwise. I'm actually going to hold this trap for when Tigrex is capturable because, quite frankly, I do not want to have this quest go on for longer than it needs to. This Gabo guy, or Gabo, I'll call him Gabo. Gabo? I don't know what to call him. I really don't. But the point is, he's pissing me off, and he's basically failed us, because he has decided to go AFK, not for a minute or two, but instead for the majority of the length of this quest, as far as I'm able to tell. So, fuck that guy, quite frankly. Now, Tigrex was an interesting hunt for me when I was first coming through Freedom Unite. For those who are not aware, it, Freedom Unite was my first Monster Hunter game. And I remember using the gun lance on this guy and pretty much refusing to engage him when he was enraged because it was just too much. I could not handle him. Of course, the reason why was because I did not have the mobility that you really need with a Tigrex when you're going solo with him. Even with a group, you want mobility. But solo, it's even more important because he's going to be coming after you constantly. Having a shield is not going to help if all he does is charge through your shield and then he ends up too far away to even hit. So that was pretty much the situation when I was fighting him with the Gunlance solo back when I was first going through this game. And it was really a difficult experience. It was not fun at all. And what I would have to do was basically almost exclusively hit him. Oh, come on. I had to almost exclusively hit him with Wyvern fire attacks. I had to just keep on waiting for my Gunlance to charge up and then I would hit him with that, and then I'd pretty much hang back and let him do whatever he needed to do. Especially towards the end of the quest when he'd be constantly going enraged. It would literally be that I would wyvern fire him, let him go enraged, let him run around for a while, and then by the time my wyvern fire had recharged, or cooled down, however you want to say that, um, he would no longer be enraged, and then I'd hit him with it, and then he would go enraged again, so I'd just sit there and wait for him. And, of course, the result of that was a very long quest, but hey, it was quest complete, at the very least. So that was one good thing about it. Now, Demon Dance is one of those things that I always do like to go for, because it does deal the most damage. But you really need to try and not greed for it too hard, especially in this game. Especially against a Tigrex. But, um, yeah, some people do greed for Demon Dance. I sort of bit my tongue there, so it sounded like I had a little lisp, I think. But, um, yeah. Or well, some kind of speech impediment, you know. Why the hell are you flying away so quickly? I don't appreciate that. This Gabo dickhead. All of my frustration, I must say. I mean, it's not his fault. I'm sure he hasn't chosen to go AFK. I don't think he is actively leeching our quest, but still, it's not something I appreciate, and it's not something either of my teammates appreciate at this point, especially considering we are one death away from failure. So, yeah, I guess I'm being a little bit dramatic. It is just a single Tigrex quest. We are all level appropriate. We should be fine, but still, I'm not impressed about the possibility of us failing. Oh, come on, look at that tail! That's what killed me before, just that tail existing. Now, when he is affected by Flash, 
The big thing that's important to watch out for is him doing his spin attack, which I think he's about to do. No, he's not. Now, I did say that I wouldn't bother with raw resistance here. Oh, now he's doing the spin. But yeah, that's oftentimes what catches you. Oh, he's going to fucking combo me with that. Um, I'm watching very carefully to see what he is doing. I do not have the ability to heal my teammate right now, so he's just going to have to survive. He is not... Oof. I saw what he was doing there. That was really dodgy. He was walking in the path of the Tigrex. But uh, he did change his direction, fortunately. Oh, I'm very tempted to pull out my... Shock Trap, because he is exhausted, I think. Okay, I flinched him out of doing his spin, which is very important. I'm attacking his back legs, because that's the safest place for me to be. Let's go for a capture. I don't know if that guy's going for a capture or not, but I'm doing it. Okay, he is not capturable, which is kind of ridiculous. But, fortunately, Gabo has joined the hunt, so this should not take too much longer. There we go. Good job, everyone. Fuck that, I have to say. That took a little bit longer than it was supposed to, and we were... There was a higher risk than there should have been for us to fail the quest, but we managed it. Good job, everyone. Except for Gabo, Mr. Dickhead with the King Atalant sword. Alright, so this quest is going to be Azur Rathalos. I believe this is the first time I've actually done an Azur Rathalos in this game on camera. I've got no idea why it took so long for that to happen, but it has to happen eventually, I suppose. There are certain monsters that I haven't fought on camera in this game that I would like to, for example, Rusted Kushala Deora, but that'll happen eventually, I'm sure. This is the King's Domain. We will be fighting the good old Azur Rathalos in the Forest and Hills, and I guess because I've started in this area, I may as well take this route. This is not my favourite route, ladies and gentlemen, but again, I've started here, so it's probably faster if I go this way in the end. Or it could end up being about the same length of time, in spite of me being one area away, because it does take a long time to climb all of this. Most of you are probably familiar with climbing this in Generations and Generations Ultimate. It's a lot faster than in this game. It's the same with the Snowy Mountains, which was called the Arctic Ridge, I think, in Generations and Generations Ultimate. I can't remember. They changed all the names and I've got no idea what they are. Kind of unnecessary in my opinion, I understand what they're going for, but really I just don't relate to it. I think that if a place already has a name, just keep it. It's less confusing for people like me, but I guess they're not really counting on people returning to second gen anytime soon. Oh! I can hear Azur Rathalos. And something's fighting Lennon as well. Don't know what that would be. I'm just collecting spiderwebs, you know. Seeing as though I'm right in front of one, I may as well collect them. Be able to make some pitfall traps, you know. What are you doing, man? Can you stop being so confusing? Oh, okay. He just wanted to come up and say hello, and now he's going down to fight some hunters, myself included. Oh my god, he can't decide on what he's doing. It's freaking Rathalos. This is a rather large one, too. He's going to charge me. I hate this monster so much. I don't really, but still, he's being a complete asshole. in case you were not aware. Got some moss wine in this room, but they're not really going to cause too much trouble. It's the frickin', um, it's the bullfango that caused trouble, of course. Just going to get some hits off on this head. Hopefully I can get a golf swing. He did move out of my, uh, out of my range, unfortunately, so couldn't really do much about that. I'm sorry if I hit anyone. Fortunately, because the Super Pound is so bizarre, you don't really have to worry so much about hitting people. Actually, you have to worry about it more, because the hitbox of the Super Pound in this game is super broken. I don't know who designed that, but whoever designed it was probably blind, because it doesn't make any sense. Like, I think the hitbox hits slightly to the right more than it hits to the left, and it's really weird. It's like a diagonal right hitbox. It's not a... Uh, it's not a circular hitbox is what I'm trying to describe to you, because you would think that you would have sort of a shockwave-esque hitbox, but no, it's like a... it's bizarre, and I can't even begin to describe it. We've got two hammer users here, so we should be able to get a stun off pretty quickly, or a KO, however you want to say that. I guess stun is a little bit confusing, because we have been stunning him with flash bombs, so... In the interest of not confusing my dear viewers, I will call it KO. But anyway... Gonna try and get the turnaround super pound. No, he's gonna do that instead. 
course, he's more interested in shooting people with fireballs than just running around. Alright, should be able to get the Super Pound here. Or not, he's going to have the, uh, the Flash Bomb dealt to him, but that's alright. This is an opportunity for a Super Pound. Not a Super Pound, sorry, a Triple Pound. And I managed to get that Golf Swing off, which is what I like to see. That is where the real damage is with the Hammer. Everything else is just decent damage, but the Golf Swing is absolutely intense damage. And we should be able to... Oh, I should have gone for that full Triple Pound there. Had a good opportunity. Even hitting the wing like that, still really good damage because it is the golf swing. Crazy. Like the amount of damage that the golf swing does is just unreasonable almost. But I understand why they do that. It makes a lot of sense. It's the attack that's most difficult to actually get off. I am not climbing that shit. I've already done it once. I'm not doing it twice. And I, again, I don't think it would actually end up being faster. Okay, I'm glad I didn't even bother doing that because he is not staying in Area 5. So there you go. So we do have a slightly more competent team this time. This is my room. I was joining someone else's room before, and someone left that room, so the party disbanded, but I, of course, created a new room, and here we are with a new group. And everyone seems to be nice and tight. No one is going AFK for the entirety of the hum, and again, we are all level appropriate, which is good. It's a little bit overkill for a single Azure Rathalos, but whatever. As it usually is, if you've got a group of four people who are level appropriate, generally the monster at your level is going to be at a severe disadvantage. Unless it is something like an Elder Dragon, you know. Or a similar endgame monster like a Cantor or a Carlos. But I will mention that there is no G-Rank Akantor in this game. There is technically a G-Rank Akantor. It's an event quest, but it still gives high-rank materials. So there is no real point in doing the G-Rank Akantor quest. The reason why is because Akantor is the high-rank version of Akantos, essentially. Because he was the big final boss of Freedom 2, whereas Akantos is the big final boss of Freedom Unite. And so they didn't really give you the um, high rank version of Akantor because it was their intention to have Akantos be the G rank Akantor effectively. And that is the reason why. Can you stop with your wind press? I don't know if we're going for a capture or a kill, but I will leave that to whoever wants to make the decision. I will go and carve this tail. And of course the classic, the absolute classic is having this tail pop off on top of that little uh, ridge over there. This thing right here. You are constantly seeing people screenshotting this. That is like the most common screenshot that you will find. The second most common is killing the Rathalos on the island in the volcano area of first gen. Usually Monster Hunter Freedom when it comes to Hunts Diverse screenshots. Really annoying. Those are the two most common screenshots you see when it comes to Rathalos. So... Oh, it looks like we are going for a capture. Whatever floats your boat. Is it, who put down that trap? Was it... No, it wasn't Garavito, so... It's really his decision whether or not we kill or capture. So, yeah, he wants to kill, so we will kill. That's it. Because, again, his quest. It would be super rude to go and... That's really rude, man. I'm gonna actually talk to that guy, because it's not acceptable to... Just decide to capture the monster when the host wants to kill it. So, I'm definitely going to let them know what's going on. I'll be back in a moment in the reward screen. Alright, I'm back. We've got a Shakalaka who is trying to... Oh no, this is King Shakalaka, sorry. Let's go take him on. He does take a little bit to get killed, especially when he's running around like this. Really annoying monster, I have to say. But, uh, anyway. He's a little bit of fun. He's something unique. Not everyone has fought this guy before. Oh, King Shakalaka. He is technically... Is he technically a large monster? I don't think he is. He's sort of like a weird side monster, like... Oh, I've gone and... Made him dizzy. I have to say, I've never used a hammer on a King Shakalaka, so I really didn't know that you were able to do that. I'm assuming that's the result of KO damage. I really don't know, though. Alright. Either way, guys, I will see you in the next hunt. Hopefully it will be something interesting. <laughs> I'll see you then.